do everything we can to combat this problem. So we got a bunch of experts in the room and he locked them in a warehouse for like three, uh, four months. And he said, don't come out till you fix this problem. All right. And from that came the combat hunter program. If you probably already heard of it. Most of you. Uh, that's why I spent the last 10 years at combat hunter training Marines. I've trained over 4,000 service members to include law enforcement, board patrol, uh, FBI and marshals in these skills, how to be aware of your surroundings and maximize your mental capacity to keep you out of trouble. I'm um, telling you all this hardcore stuff about, you know, combat hunter and the Marine Corps and combat deployments. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not in the Marine Corps. I'm not in the military. I'm not going on a combat deployment anytime soon. That's OK. These these skills apply into your every day. And that's what I've been spent the last kind of year and a half doing. Getting this business going is taking these vital skills and applying them to your everyday life. When you're walking around with your family, when you're walking around with your kids, when you're taking your kids out, um, uh, to dinner at night when you're picking them up, uh, when you're out socializing with your friends. All these lessons that we learned over there in the Marine Corps, uh, we, are, we, we paid in blood that have a serious application here in America. Uh, it's fantastic. So just a little bit about background about myself, kind of establish my authority. This is an Uncle Jim Bob's, you know, profiling class where, um, you know, I just made this stuff up and I'm hoping it sounds good. The, the Marine Corps and the, the American military spent Millions of dollars, millions of dollars for the information you're about to get right here in this webinar. Um, the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab, Office of Naval Research, everyone had their say. So these skills work. So when you come on training with me, there's a lot of things I, I need you to understand. But you'll hear me say this a lot. I might say a concept and I tell you, I need you to hit the I believe button on this. I need you to hit the I believe button. For this to work, for this mindset to work and to keep you and those around you safe, there's some things I'll say, and then you just got to hit the I believe button on. All right. Uh, it'll make sense. You will believe at the end of it. Uh, so don't worry. I'll take you along that path. But we're going to be talking about a lot of upper, uh, you know, uh, upper level concepts. I'm not an educated guy, you know, uh, but we're going to be talking about it, cognitive sciences, sociology, a little bit of anthropology. Um, and we're going to tie it in a bow that you're going to be able to effectively utilize this stuff when you, when you walk away from this webinar right now. Okay. Today, after this webinar, you're going to be able to use these skills, okay, um, uh, along with all the follow-on courses and training I'll be presenting as the, the days go along. But today, it's no theory. We're going to talk about some theory, but I'm going to give you some concepts to walk away with today, all right? So you see my name up there, uh, Mergers LC. Like I said, ask questions. Sometimes I get into my mode, and I might not look over there, uh, but I'll try to answer. And also, I'm going to wrap up probably the last 10 minutes. There's going to be 60 to to uh, 60 minutes to maybe an hour and 15 minutes. Um, I'll spend the last 15 minutes wrapping up any questions that you might have. I like to try to answer them when I get them, but sometimes it can be overwhelming and it can kind of take away. So if I didn't get you during the talk, I'm gonna get you at the end, all right? So a little bit about background, a little bit uh, about what we're gonna talk about, all right? Um, so where does this stuff come from? How do we find this stuff, all right? Um, and why did I tell you guys your, your brain is trying to kill you? Where did I go with that? All right. And what I mean by this, and I'm going to, I'm going to shut off the uh, video for a little bit. So you're not going to see me. You're just going to see the uh, slides. Let's turn off that. Okay. All right. That should have done it. So you should only see the PowerPoint right now. Um, I'm going to walk away for a second, just because I like to walk and talk. Uh, your brain's trying to kill you. Where do I come up with that premise? Well, um, there's a lot of goofy things your brain does that can get you in trouble. For 99% of the population, it's not a big deal because we go about our day-to-day -day life and we're not really, uh, you know, the most people aren't really interacting uh, uh, with threats on a given day. On, on a given day, it's not your job, as opposed to someone like law enforcement or the military where, you know, that's sort of your job to act on that. And why you say your brain is trying to kill you is what it's going to do is it throws a lot of goofy stuff at you, especially in times of stress, okay? How you're acting right now in a non-stressful environment, sitting here watching this training seminar, is not how you're gonna react in times of stress, okay? I know that's not what a lot of people wanna believe. They think, hey, when, when, I, when if it happens, man, when it goes down, I'm gonna rise to the occasion, okay? I can tell you right now, after been doing this over a decade, you will not rise to the occasion. You will defer back to the highest level of your training, okay? You will not rise to the occasion. You will defer to the highest level of your training, okay? And what that means is if you're out there doing your thing, training, mentally preparing yourself all the time, 
uh, being safe, you know, having that vigilant mindset when you're walking around, that's when you're, when you're actively uh, participating in your safety, okay? You're not being reactive, you're being proactive, like we were with those snipers and whatnot, okay? So again, a lot of stuff, 99% of the stuff your brain does on a, on a normal given day is fine. You don't even realize it. But when times of stress, you can literally jettison one vital piece of information that you might really need that might save your life or, or save those around you. And your, your, your brain does this goofy stuff where it'll jettison things, okay? And it'll actually hurt you, all right? It doesn't make sense sometimes, but the brain can be a little bit uh, uh, weird with that, all right? And I'll give you an example of what happened to us where our brain wasn't allowing us to see what was right in front of us, all right? You heard me men mention the uh, Juba sniper before, and I'm going to go ahead and advance a slide, and I'll just give you a brief synopsis of what happened there. Like I said, that Juba sniper was running around Iraq, uh, killing us like it was going out of style, and it felt like we were being hunted. All the way into the this picture right here happened, this situation happened. On this day, an awesome American, uh, I won't say his name out loud right now, but an awesome American who was a sniper himself took the shot and killed the Juba sniper on this day. They went down to the, to the area and the vehicle and they started uh, searching it. And that's when they finally realized, um, oh my God, they're not taking close, they're not taking far away shots, they're taking close in shots, okay? I don't know anybody's background in this webinar right now, but if I said, hey, if you go outside today and you look out for a sniper, uh, where's everybody probably gonna look? They're probably gonna go look up and out, you know, far away. Uh, that's what's called a file folder. We have a file folder for a sniper. We'll, we'll get into what I mean by file folders later on. And we couldn't find them. He was operating. And so this situation right happened, happened, and we were able to break this apart. We finally figured out, oh, crap, this is how this guy's operating, and we are able to break the mold, okay? You see he was shooting from a vehicle uh, ground level, sometimes 100 yards away from his target, sometimes 50 yards across the street. We'd never seen that before, so that was we were not prepared for it, okay? You see some items in this picture right here. You see the rifle. You see uh, a camera. That's what they're using to use a propaganda video. The rifle has a very interesting story that I'll tell in another one. Uh, so oh, we get all that, okay? The, the, the sniper rifle you see there in the bottom right, the camera, propaganda, okay. You know, someone savvy to pull the car over like that, that's probably going to ring some bells going, hey, what's going on here? But I want you all to paint all those things out of that item. I want you to look at that. And just look at that little thing stuffed up under the camera right there under the broken window. Um, people guess that thing as like a chamois or a towel or a teddy bear. And that's all wrong. That's not what that item is. He's using that item to prop up the camera. But what that item actually is, is the little seatbelt cover. You ever gotten a crazy like cab driver's uh, cab and they got the seatbelt cover from getting, keeping their you know nipples from getting chafed? That's what that thing is, right? Okay. So everyone here in America, everybody on this webinar right now, ask yourself if you pulled a car over, let's say you're you know, hypothetically a cop, and you pulled a car over, uh, and you pulled that item out, that seatbelt cover, would you immediately go to red? Would you immediately be like, oh, we got a threat here? For most of us, no one's going to go to red because it's an innocuous item, the daily item, and it has no, it presents no threat value. So I can jettison that. I can throw that away. Oh, I don't need that information. Okay. Well, here's the issue with that. Uh, normally in a classroom, I'd ask you to raise your hand who's been to a third world country. Uh, a lot of people have. And if, you, if you've been in a third world country in this webinar, uh, think this to yourself. When you're in these third world countries, when's the last time anybody wore a seatbelt? Huh? Try to remember. When's the last time anyone wore a seatbelt? Because I can tell you in all my time in Iraq, I never saw anybody wear a seatbelt. So why or oh why would you have that item in your car? That's where I want to get everybody on this webinar. That's where I want to get you when you walk away, to be naturally curious to, to look at that item with no threat value and go, you know what? This doesn't make sense. No one here wears their seatbelt. This does not fit. Okay, It's a no fit. You know, um, That's powerful. If you can train your brain to, to see detail like that, and you can. I've been doing it for 10 years. That's powerful, and that can skyrocket your, your survivability and your awareness around people. All right? Um, so here's a picture of the two idiots. You see the gentleman with the white shirt on the left. He has uh, he was the driver, and the gentleman on the right was the Juba sniper. Okay, uh, the the overweight guy on the right. Now you might ask yourself, 
uh, didn't picture that guy. I bet when I said sniper or do the sniper, no one pictured the, the fat guy on the right, right? Because you didn't have a file folder for that. The file folder you have for a sniper is usually what we see uh, in movies or if you've been in the military, you've seen him, you know, a fit guy with a ghillie suit and, and all that good stuff. He's real fit. Well, the problem with that, if you don't realize that's an incomplete file folder, that's not wrong. You're not wrong if you describe them like that, but it doesn't cover everyone that could be a sniper. You know, see what I'm, where I'm going with this? So even though we didn't immediately think that, that's who it really was. So part of my training is trying to get you to get those blinders off. You have these kind of beliefs in your head. Uh, I call them blinders. You know, I'll pull those blinders off, and we're going to look at people's behavior. I don't care what you look like, but if you're giving me the behavior of a threat, then we have a problem. That arrow you see pointing at something, they had a Klingon cloaking device in their, in their little sniper uh, cab. And what do I mean by that? They had a device in there that would allow us, um, the military, not to see them when they were operating. Anybody have a guess what that is? Yeah? What about that taxi sign? You see that taxi sign? Yep. $5 piece of crap taxi sign. That's their cloaking device. Because it doesn't make sense to a normal person if someone's in the front seat and someone's in the back seat, right? If I ask my best friend, hey, can you run me down to the gas station real quick? I don't get in the back seat, you know? What is it, like driving Miss Daisy? No. You get in the front seat with them. So how do I make that make sense? You slap a taxi sign on top and boom. What have you just done? You've blended in right in the environment. You've just provided uh, urban camouflage, okay? And someone will look at you, see the person in the front, guy in the back, see the taxi sign, and completely blank that out of their head. That's not something they would retain, okay? 